It's been one year since Samsung rolled out its Galaxy Tab S7 FE, and in the last year we've gotten a better idea of where that sits in Samsung's Galaxy Tab ecosystem. This was initially designed to be the budget version of the large 12.4 inch Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. The FE standing for Fan Edition, which usually means they take out some features, but keep some of the core elements that the fans love. And I think here, it's the size of that screen. We've also seen a re-release of the Galaxy Tab S6 light with a new processor. And I think that's created a lot of pretty good options for people on the low end. You got the S6 Lite if you want a larger screen, but similar options, you go with this one. But it has been a full year. How does this stand up after a year? Well, to just kind of break it down, I think it stands up pretty darn well. Going back and revisiting this tablet, I really enjoyed my time with it. And I think it's mainly because of the size of the screen. 12.4 inches, at least drawing on a screen this size, is really, really comfortable. And this tablet is almost $100 cheaper than it was when it launched a year ago. At the top of Samsung's lineup are the S8s. You have the standard S8, which is a little over 10 inches. You have the S8 Plus, which is very similar to this. And then the S8 Ultra, which is a giant Android tablet. But of course, those have those top of the line specs. So what if you want to save a little money and go with the tablet? Tab S7 FE instead. Let's take a look at these specs. First of all, we have that 12.4 inch screen. This is not a super AMOLED screen like you're going to find on the S8 Plus. It also has a 60 hertz refresh rate instead of the 120 you're gonna find on the S8 line. You still have this 16 by nine aspect ratio. You still have this really, really nice build quality. I can tell that the material is a little bit different that they're using on the back. However, it's still really nice and real, really premium feeling. You also have 2,560 pixels by by 1,600 pixels, and on a screen this size, it, it still looks really good, even though it's not that high-end display. The AKG speakers, I think, sound terrific, especially for a tablet. You don't expect tablets to sound as good as this does. One area this is making a compromise is in the processor. This is a Snapdragon 750G processor. It's not great, but it's not horrible. Also worth noting, this is a touch better than the 720G processor that came out in the recently re-released S6 Lite. You only get four gigabytes of RAM on the 64 gigabyte storage model and you can get six gigabytes of ram if you jump up to the 128 gigabyte if you are worried about storage there is an sd card slot on this as well so you could expand it yourself down the road the camera along the back isn't as good as what you're going to find on the s8 it's a single eight megapixel camera and the camera along the front is a five megapixel camera and it can do 1080p video and as i go through these specs one of the things that stands out to me and that i appreciate about this tablet is that they seem to have cut the things that I care about the least. For example, the cameras. I don't really necessarily need a phenomenal camera setup in a tablet. That's just not what I'm using it for. Maybe occasionally I'll scan a document or snap a picture, but I'm not taking hardcore photography photos with this. And of course, why are we here? The S Pen is included. If you want to cut down the cost, one way to do it, and what a lot of manufacturers do, is they cut out that pen. Samsung does not. Not only that, but if you compare this to, say, an iPad, which sells their Apple Pencil for $100 to $130 more, this is packed in. It's right there, doesn't cost you another dime. I've reviewed a lot of devices with S Pens, and so I have talked about the S Pen a lot. Is it the best pen you can draw with? No, I, I, I don't think so. There's some quirks to it that you have to get used to. However, I feel like it's really, really good. So for example, the things I'm looking for are how smooth are the lines? How does the pressure react? Is it responsive enough? And all of those things, it checks the box nicely. Any complaints I have about the pen tend to be nitpicks or things that you just more or less have to get used to that might feel a little weird at first, but you kind of gradually start to work into your workflow. For example, the pen tip itself is a rubbery tip. I don't like using that as much as say, you know, a hard plastic tip on, on a textured screen or something like that. But what that rubber tip does is, since you have a smooth glass screen, is it gives you some resistance so your pen isn't sliding around like a hard plastic pen would on a smooth glass screen. It's also really small and lightweight pen. Uh, this is better than the pens that they used to tuck into their phones. I guess they still do tuck it into their high-end Galaxy phones, don't they? Those pens are really skinny. They're uncomfortable to use after a while. This is a good size. You can use this for hours and you're going to be okay. It's not as comfortable as, say, a Wacom pen or something like that, but it gets the job done and it's not going to hurt you. You're also not getting a lot of the same Bluetooth features that you're getting in the higher-end pens, but again, I'm okay with that. Those features are things like remote controlling the camera, 
stuff like that that you don't necessarily need for drawing. All the core things that I'm looking for, that pressure sensitivity, the palm rejection, all of that is here. I have links to this Galaxy Tab S7 FE down below in the description. It links to Best Buy, the sponsor of today's video. Before I buy Anytech, I go to Best Buy and check out their top deals page. They are always running some great deals on some great tech. In fact, right now, this tablet is on sale on their website. They have really good deals on all of Samsung's tablets right now. This year's top of the line Galaxy Tab S8 and wow, the newly refreshed Galaxy Tab S6 Lite for only $230. You can also become a Best Buy Total Tech member, which gives you even more exclusive deals along with tech support, worry-free product protection, free standard installation, delivery, and haul away. There's also the Best Buy price match guarantee. Find it somewhere cheaper, Best Buy will match that price. They can get your product to you fast, or if you need it even sooner, just stop by your local store and pick up your order. Check out my links down below in the description to take advantage of Best Buy's great deals today. One thing I noticed when I was testing out the S6 Lite is that it didn't work with Samsung's higher end features. This tablet, however, does. The main one I'm thinking about is Samsung's main screen sharing application they rolled out about a year ago. This kind of turns your tablet into like a Wacom-esque, Cintiq-esque drawing tablet. You can connect it to a Windows computer and you can draw on that computer using the included pen. It's really good. I find that the longer you use it, the more laggy it gets. If you wanna use it just as a second screen to watch videos on or have your email or have it set up beside your main computer, it works phenomenally for that. I also tested out something called Super Display a few weeks back. That's a paid app, it does the same thing. I find that's a little bit better for drawing if that's the road you want to go down with a tablet like this. And of course, the Android app ecosystem is something I have talked about a lot in my videos and is something that has really improved in terms of at least the drawing apps that are out there. Obviously, I love Clip Studio Paint. I've been drawing in Clip Studio Paint through most of this video in the background, as you probably noticed. You can also now get Krita. It's a little quirky here and there, but people love it. It's free. It's an open source application and it's getting better all the time. There's a lot of applications that are more lighter weight. Infinite Painter. There's a lot of people who love Infinite painter. Uh, there's iBez Paint X. There's a lot of people out there who love iBez Paint X. And there's a lot of other applications that are kind of like that, these lightweight mobile apps that are kind of fun to draw in, have the good hand gestures, where the interface just kind of gets out of your way and lets you draw. There's some really good ones out there. This tablet also has Samsung DeX. What that does is it takes your Android tablet and changes up the interface to make it look more Windows-like. So if you're running two apps at once, they're windowed. You can move them around. And on a screen this size, I think it works better. I think it really displays what DeX can do. Personally, I'm not a DeX fan. It kind of crosses the lines in weird ways where I expect something to work like a Windows computer, but it still works like an Android app, and there's just some weird interface stuff going on there, but a lot of people love it. So after a year, my general thoughts are pretty much the same, but I think I'm more positive on it now than I was a year ago. I think the reason why I like it more now than I did a year ago isn't necessarily the hardware or anything that it's doing now that it didn't do before, but it's the price. I think at $450, this is a really good value. Talked about this at the top of the video, because at the bottom, if you want the cheapest Android tablet to draw on, the X6, S6 Lite is a really good option now that they've updated the processor inside of it. If it's available in your region. And now, if you want a larger screen, you pay $100 more and you can get that. And at these price points, that makes a ton of sense. And if you want all those premium features, okay, boom, you go up to that S8 line. What do you think? Do you think the Galaxy Tab S7 FE is still a good value? Or do you think it's worth waiting to see what Samsung rolls out next? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.